you so much for joining the Sheckler Spotlight. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So how are things for you and where are you joining us from? Uh, things are going all right. I'm joining from Brooklyn, New York. That's where my husband and I live. Uh, we were actually with my in-laws for the first three months of all of this. Uh, maybe probably like March through June, I would say. And um, got to spend some time with family and just, it was a, just a different way of living, you know, because I'm so used to going to work every day and juggling tons of auditions and things. And so everything just completely stopped. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's been it's been nice and also a little difficult. And now I think we're just, you know, riding the wave of, of what this newness is for us. Definitely. I think it's given uh, a lot of people, especially in the arts, just that time to slow down and kind of kind of be a little introspective and we get to you know pursue you know maybe new interests that we don't normally have time to pursue and especially like you mentioned family I actually go to uh, Brooklyn College I'm a master's student in piano performance there so I flew home on March 14th uh, so it's, I'm, I'm home in Iowa right now and uh, just having that you know opportunity to spend with family it's I can't take it for granted so I'm really enjoying it too but um, I kind of want to take it we're gonna kind of go back to the past and I'd like to ask everyone what their musical origins um, were so what what was the start of your musical journey if we go way way back it would be uh, being in the church choir in my home church um, I I love to sing but I was a really shy kid uh, and my parents were advocates of doing something in the church you couldn't just attend so my sister and I joined the choir. And uh, so that was my first introduction to music. And then my dad got my sister in, and I into piano lessons. I took piano lessons from age 10 through college until 21 and then I stopped. And I no longer can play. I mean, I can I can learn music, I can learn my songs, but you know, piano is, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. I, so, uh, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you know. I mean, and you haven't lost it, so you're good. Um, but uh, I, I did choir in elementary school and then choir in middle school and on, and you know, honor choir, all state, all that stuff. I did those things, and I really didn't take it seriously until I got to college. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it was in college. Did you know, I mean, did you always know you wanted to pursue music, or was it? I mean, because you, you decided on the major, so was it in college you, you said, okay, I'm studying this, but I still don't know what I want to do? Or how, how did that work out for you? Yeah, that's kind of the story of me, really, is that I, I get my toes wet and decide later if I want to do something. So when I got to Spelman College, which is where I went to for undergrad, mm -hmm. I essentially wanted to be a choir director. Oh. I, I wanted to be a choral instructor. I had taken I'd been in choir for so long and I didn't really see any choral directors that looked like me so I wanted to be a choral director but I, I the performance bug hit me pretty soon and so I, I was like no I want to sing first and then I'll, I'll be a choir director later so I really was pursuing a classical voice at, at Spelman and in grad school I pursued classical voice and you know I did all you know the Italian art songs mm -hmm. and the arias and everything I did that whole spiel <laughs> um, and I got my master's in vocal performance with the hope of having a career in opera but it kind of overlapped with my first musical theater audition and so I left grad school, I completed, but I, um, once I finished grad school, I immediately went into my first musical theater job, just thinking it was a way to build my resume and learn a little bit, but it actually changed my life, so. Yeah, absolutely. So how did that opportunity within the musical theater world, how did that come up? How did you even, you know, give it a chance? That's such a good question. And it happened by ch it happened by chance, <laughs> and I feel like that's why that I'm telling you this is the story of my life. Someone says one thing, and the seed is planted, and I just go off. Uh, but I, uh, a classmate of mine, sent a group of us a Facebook message. She was like, "Hey, Court Theater's doing Porgy and Bess," and because we were all in school for classical voice, 
of course we're going to be interested in a production of Porgy and Bess. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. Y'all go in for that. And so I, I went in and I didn't know anything about equity. It's such a funny story because I broke all the rules. Like I showed up to this audition and I signed up and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many people ahead of me, but I have to go back to my class. So I, um, I asked the monitor, I said, hey, you know, is there any way I can be seen earlier? I have to go to my class. And she was like, well, you have to ask all these people ahead of you. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went one by one. I was like, can I go? Can I go? I have to go back to my class. And they let me go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they let me go. <laughs> they were really kind. And uh, I had no clue that that was like something you don't do. Now I know I would never do that. But at the time I had no clue. And because I was clueless, I was fearless, you know? And so I went in, I did the audition. I got the call back got another callback and ended up doing that production a year later. They were casting pretty early in advance. Yeah, very but early, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty early for regional theater, I think. But um, I, I, I did that project and I met a bunch of musical theater folks in that project and then it kind of led from to the next thing and the next thing after that. Wow, that's amazing. So, you know, a lot of people now know you because of Broadway's The Lion King and you're yes. all in that. And I, would you say that was a big turning point in your career for you, having that Broadway role? Absolutely, it changed my life because it, when I booked The Lion King, I was, uh, I was on tour for Dirty Dancing, but I was based in Chicago. That's where I got my musical theater start. And you know, Chicago is a great theater scene. You can really learn a lot there, um, but there's a cap. You know, you can only go so far, you know, maybe you're doing storefronts and then from storefronts, you're doing some equity houses and from equity houses, you know, you're at the Goodman, you're at Steppenwolf, you know, you've made it if you're at those theaters regularly in Chicago, but that's, that's the ceiling. And so, of course, we all have aspirations. If you're in musical theater to one day be on Broadway, it's such a, you know, a benchmark for success in some kind of way with, for theater. And so... I got the call from my agent that they were looking for NALA replacements and I just jumped on it. And I actually made a video about my uh, audition. Yeah, there, they will, there will be a video of the entire, whatever I did, play by play of the audition on YouTube for people to see. Cause I just thought, I don't think people know like how this goes down, you know? So I wanted to share it. Oh, that's fantastic. Actually, I was going to ask you about uh, I mean, there's so many people that have questions about the audition process and are kind of just going in blind, um, you know, with these aspirations, but they don't have any direction. So I'll have to link that video in the description, you know, when we upload this interview. Um, but I, if you could just give us a little hint, could you tell us how did, so it came through your agent, but what was the audition process, you know, for Nala like? I mean, you don't have to go into it fully because we'll look at your video too, but what was that like for you? It was, um, it's funny because I felt more comfortable than I expected. My nerves weren't as high as they usually are with probably any audition I had gone to in, in, up to that point because I, I was on tour with Dirty Dancing and I felt like, well, I'm employed, I'm making money now <laughs> instead of working a bunch of survival jobs. So I didn't feel that pressure to book it. I think before then, every time I went in for an audition, I was like, I really need to book this because I need the health weeks for my, for my insurance. Or I really need to book this because this pays better than Starbucks and you know, Starbucks ain't hitting it right now. <laughs> so, um, so when I got the call, um, just the rundown of everything, I was on tour, so I had to send in a tape at first. Mm -hmm. And then once I got the call back for the tape, I flew in and uh, I sang for the production team. And then they called me back in and I did it again and did the scene and the producer was there for that one. And then the next day I had a movement call and that's pretty much how it went. It was, it was pretty quick. They only had an audition for two days and then they let everybody know, so. Wow, is that? the typical process for Broadway um, in their audition process? No, I think, it, I think it differs from show to show. For a show like The Lion King, which is longstanding, it's got iconic roles, everyone kind of is familiar with the content. I think that when they are seriously looking for a replacement, it moves pretty quickly. But The Lion King, they hold auditions throughout the year in different cities. They do open calls and everything. So. Uh, they're just 
keeping people on their roster that they can access when they need a replacement. So it just depends. If you're going in for the line community and it's an open call, it's probably not gonna move as quickly as my process was like. So um, it's just something to note. But then other Broadway shows, you'll audition and, you know, for Kissing Kate, for example, I went in and I got called back two days later. And then I knew with, by the next week that they wanted me to move forward. But even that's pretty fast too. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fast too. Um, sometimes a month could go by between your first audition and your callback. Uh, sometimes three months could go by and we don't know what's happening. They could have, they could be having issues, you know, on their end or maybe they're, they're interested in you, but they still need to, you know, figure out some more people and see how you fit in the casting. Or it could be that they put an offer out to someone and they said no, and they're like, okay, well, this person's next on our list, let's reach out to them. You just, you never know what's going on over there. But it, there is no, I guess there's no blueprint. Like, this is how it goes. It's, <laughs> it, every time I've gone in, it's been <laughs> different. It's an so it's I'm a just, experience each time, right, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Wow, yeah. That's amazing. So how, going from The Lion King to Kiss Me Kate, um, and now you're back in The Lion King, correct? Mm -hmm. You're still on the roster. So, yes. Well, how, I mean, two very different shows. I mean, how yes. do you take that character and after doing it for so long, and you know, day in and day out, and then you go to Kiss Me Kate and it was the role of Hattie, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how how do you juggle that? Or transfer? You know, it's, it's so funny because <laughs> when I left The Lion King and they were, you know, they were sending me off and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like jumping around. I was like, I'm not going to have to jump in Kiss Me Gay, you know? <laughs> like, it's so funny that I actually said that. And there's this iconic moment in Too Darn Hot where we all jumped 12 times. <laughs> so definitely not true. But um, it was nice to put on clothes, clothes. You know, it was nice to wear, a, you know, like a lace front wig and like feel like a woman because Nala, they kind of... Um, you know, Nala is this fierce female character, yes, but there's a lot of her femininity physically that's that's uh, washed out. You know, you're wearing a corset and it's over your chest and everything is very structured and warrior-like. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Hattie, you know, she's wearing this nice, you know, tailored dress and, you know, red lip, but I, I could paint my nails if I wanted to. It just felt uh, freer and I, I enjoy both roles in very different ways. I also had a lot less to do in Kiss Me Kate. Like I started the show and then I had little moments with Lily, Vanessi, and then, then that's it. You know, and then I come out for Too Darn Hot and then I come out for The Vows. Like, so it was a lot less for me to do. Um, it was different to start the show because in The Lion King, I come out in act two. Um, and, and Kiss Me Kate, I started the show, so I need to be ready, you know, focused. And I felt like a huge responsibility to just start the show right, you know? It's like, the audience is coming in and they're ready to see this show that everybody's raving about. And if I'm like a little sketchy, then they're like, oh, what did we sign up for, you know? So um, I think mean, it's a little responsibility that way. Uh, and, but what the main thing I think, I, the difference between the two was that when I went to The Lion King, I was a replacement. So all of my rehearsals for the four weeks, you rehearse for four weeks uh, for The Lion King when you're learning a new track or, or replacing someone. Um, they were just, you know, it was just me. And they might call in, you know, uh, Jelani, who was playing Simba at the time, or one of his covers, or they might call in Timon and Pumbaa or one of their covers. And that's, that's, that's it. I, I didn't get a chance to meet the company until my blocking call. And then I really didn't meet anybody because they were all grumpy and they didn't want to be there. <laughs> and um, then, then my put in and, and it was just like a whoosh, you know, it was, <clears throat> I had never experienced anything like that because I was in Chicago and you start a show, everybody starts it together, you bond together, you go to Tech Week together and you put on a show. And so when I got to Kiss and Kate and I got that chance to learn with everyone and bond with everyone and, you know, see this sh show form from start to finish, it was just, uh, it was really nice to, to get that experience on, you know, on this level. Right, definitely. No, I love that. And who were, um, who were some of the favorite people that you got to work with in these shows? Um, and I mean, some of these were, there were some veterans in these shows and uh, maybe some people that we've seen in film uh, too. 
So how yes. was that experience like? You know what? It was great. I remember the first day of rehearsal, I was really nervous to meet Kelly because I hadn't met Kelly O'Hara. And the first thing she did was come up and hug me <laughs> because that's who Kelly is. Mm -hmm. She's just warm and normal and sweet and fierce. And she's just like all the things that you hope she is, she really is. Um, so it was amazing to work with her and to get to know her better. Um, you know, John Pankow was in our production, and he, you, everyone's seen him in several different films uh, or TV shows. Probably, I think he's been in Law and Order. You know, like he's mm -hmm. just that guy that's done a lot of work. I was watching a movie the other week, and I was like, "There's John." <laughs> you know, so he's that guy. He's hilarious. He loves to cook Italian food. Oh yeah. Um, and he's very, very kind, very thoughtful. We um, we had a couple of gangsters. Uh, come in so we had three gangsters so john was there the whole time but yeah. you know there's two gangsters in kiss me kate and so our other gangster um kept we kept losing gangsters so we had to get different gangsters um so we had a couple of cool people do that do that role we had tom mcgowan and richard kind so that's was really cool i mean it just honestly everybody was amazing corbin blue he's so cool like he's he loves game of thrones and uh this this game that I've never played, and so forgive me if I mispronounce it because I know it's like super popular. But he loves Catan. Did I, I say it right? I, I don't know. I'm not the person to ask, so maybe we're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, gonna... I mean, he's great, and he makes an yeah. amazing guacamole. You know, so like oh. it was just really. I I just had a great time, and I feel like what I learned is that we're all just people. Mm -hmm. And we're just all, we're all just people and our society, especially, you know, with the Hollywood phase and everything, we decided that certain people are this or that, you know, or whatever roles they play, that means that they're these people. And it's just not true. You know, we're just, we're all people. We all sweat. We all, you know, um, laugh. We all make mistakes. We all have quirks, you know, just... So I, I really enjoyed everybody. I had so much fun with the ensemble as well. Like the, that cast was filled with so many talented dancers. And um, yeah, we actually had a Zoom, uh, I want to say about two weeks ago, oh, yeah. where almost, almost everybody was in the Zoom, like uh, the oh, cast and oh, um, uh, Warren Carlisle showed up and, and Jason and um, Jason's his uh, assistant, dance assistant. and. Uh, stage managers, um, some of the roundabout uh, producers were on the call, and it was just, it was fun to catch up and see how everyone was doing, and yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I love how you touched on how these people in, you know, Hollywood and then Broadway and in the shows, they're normal people. Uh, they just yeah. have really cool jobs. I mean, we can, yeah. you know, we can look up to them, we can admire them for their talents and what they do, but they're just, you know, anyone can you know make a difference uh and be that person I, it, there's so many things to look up to in other people too that maybe not who don't have the spotlight on them so no yeah. i'm glad you mentioned that that was great um i want to go back to the audition process you yourself are making videos you're making your own youtube channel and you're doing uh, it's called 32 bar cut is that correct yeah, that's correct. Yeah, can you give a little insight on to what the your channel is going to entail? Oh yeah, I'd love to. Um, so 32 Bar Cut is basically my offering to the community. It's just, I want to dispel all the audition myths. <laughs> so I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna say, hey, do this, don't do that. Um, I worked as a reader at a major casting agency in New York, and so I feel like I saw a lot of great auditions and a lot of really bad auditions, and I learned a lot from that. And I even learned from being a reader, but mostly just watching people, I feel like I can offer some advice and some insight into what is expected, what works, what doesn't work, and how to navigate when things don't work out the way you'd hope they would or you know we just it's difficult it's such a difficult business and so I want I want to share I want to talk and I have the time to do it I don't normally have time to do anything like this usually when I'm working I am saving my voice I would I would never do as many interviews or talking as I have when I'm working 
because I uh, like my voice teacher likes to say you got cash you know you got vocal cash and once it's spent it's spent and so I'm very careful about my voice but now hey my voice is great I, you know so I'm, I want to get I want to get out there I want to talk I want to engage I want to you know help so yeah that's what 32 bar cut is it's a video every Monday and Thursday I'm trying to do every Monday and Thursday we'll see how long I can keep that up but basically I pick a topic and I talk about it and then I put it out there oh perfect I'm sure so many people are going to really find that valuable so thank you for doing that uh, for oh, so, yeah. so many of the beautiful <laughs> theater people out there and just uh, actors I'm sure you know can uh, be receptive to what you have to say too so that's great thank you um oh and I also have to ask do you in some of your auditions have you had to use the 32 bar cut oh you know what not in a while it's really a general i feel like it's a general audition uh thing to have so like i've gone on plenty of general auditions where they're like we only want 32 bars you know and so yeah i have to figure out a cut and what i what i've figured is that i can get away with more than 32 because i love ballads and and usually you know a ballad and longer you know I can get away with more as long as I make it good like the best part of that ballad I can get away with a little more but um yeah 32 bars I'd say you know a verse the hook chorus you're pretty much at 32 bars um yeah. <laughs> and nobody needs to hear two verses right like nobody needs to hear two verses in an audition they know so so quickly whether they want to use you or not so you might as well show them the best parts and then get out of there before you lose them <laughs> I love it. I love it. So now that, you know, so many things have changed, you're going to making virtual videos. And unfortunately, it looks like we don't know exactly when Broadway's coming back. Um, I'm sure, you know, that's just, it's all up in the air right now. So what are you hearing from friends um, in the industry? Um, you know, what is the, what is the current outlook? I know I, there's, there can be so much doom and gloom, I guess you could say, but I think there's so many positive things to look at. So I, I kind of want to hear what you're thinking about the industry, where you see that going, and maybe where do you see it changing? Where do you see, I see so many people doing these wonderful virtual concerts, all these Broadway casts doing it too. So where do you see the industry going? You know, that's, that's a really good question. And, and that's something I get asked a lot recently because it's not going to be the same, right? We have to figure out what it's going to look like, at least in the interim, before we can go back to something that looks a little closer to what we're used to doing, sitting in an audience together and everything and watching art. Um, I see a lot of my friends doing a lot of virtual teaching, uh, a lot of virtual concerts, like you said. Um, but I think it's, it's good to note, you know, with all of the societal issues going on now, I think what we're gonna see is a lot of people coming back changed. Like I, I already personally feel different and I feel like I, I would be missing an opportunity if I weren't more assertive or if I didn't voice my opinion um, sooner rather than later. And I think if I'm feeling that way, I know I can't be alone. And so I think we're gonna see a lot more diversity. I think we're going to see people being more outspoken. I think we're going to even see a shift in the type of shows that are being written and produced. I think we're going to see a huge shift in that. Now, how they present them, I have no clue because, you know, we're all scared to breathe on each other. But I think that we're going to see a shift and I think it's going to be different than the shift we saw in 2016 where we had Hamilton and Eclipse and Color Purple, you know, all up for Tony noms. I think it's going to be different because that happened in 2016 and then everything went back to what it's been like for 50 years. So I think, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm being hopeful, maybe I'm being naive, but I feel like the changes that are being made actually might stick this time and I'm really excited to see what that looks like. No, and like even if they don't, I feel forever changed and I feel like, well, my life is different so I'm gonna walk in that and I can appreciate that too. No, that's a great outlook and I think you always have to be the change you want to be. So mm -hmm. you have to put yourself out there and I think, you know, be assertive um, and speak up for yourself and I think, I think this is a good reboot. I think 
the way I'm looking at it is we're just recharging our batteries and then we're gonna, you know, hit the ground running and uh, go at it even harder and better, you know, than we've done before. And I think it's gonna be so exciting. So many people have done so many creative and wonderful things, not just in the arts, you know, I've said to other people, if you look in the sciences and that, you know, with the healthcare workers and stuff, they've come up with so many amazing things to help people. And I think when we look at, back at it, you know, yes, we'll have, it, it, there's so many tough times, but we're going to look back and there's, we're going to say, wow, there were some really good things that came from it. So I think we just kind of have to, you know, keep our head up and, you know, keep walking on. So but mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. So do you have any advice, you know, before we go uh, to people in the arts and uh, just to life in general uh, that you would like to share? Oh yeah, I, I like that question. And I, I, I'm finding that I'm saying the same thing because I, I wanted to reach as many people as, as it can, but I, I, I'm an advocate more so now than I ever have been of just being yourself because we're all uniquely made. So if we are simply ourselves, we are already going to be unique. We don't have to do anything strange or bizarre or gimmicky to stand out. We just, I mean, it's so lovely to watch someone just be themselves. I did a play a few years ago. This actor, oh my gosh, he was so amazing at sitting and watching. Cause he, he played the messenger in Iphigenia and Aulis and he needed to see a scene so that he could tell it the story later. And all he did for 20 minutes, you know, Greek tragedies, there's long scenes. <laughs> so all he did for 20 minutes was watch the action on stage unfold. And I'm telling you, during Tech Week, watching this man watch something was incredible. And I just say that to say that we are interesting on our own. We don't need to do anything to make ourselves interesting. And honestly, People can see through that anyway. So we might as well just be ourselves, get the pressure off your shoulder and be yourself. And I feel like you can apply that to anything in your life, no matter your profession, whether it's in performing arts or not, just simply be yourself. You are, just let yourself off the hook and be who you are. I love that. That was well said. I couldn't have said it better. That, thank you so <laughs> much for that. Uh, Adrian, this has been a pleasure visiting with you and giving, you know, just a little spotlight onto you know, what you do, what your love for music and the arts. Uh, just thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Thank you, Harrison. This has been so great. I've been looking forward to this and I'm so grateful that you're able to have me on. Absolutely. Thank you.